In this video, we're going to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals and the average value of a function. So before we jump into the mean value theorem for integrals, let's make sure we understand what it's telling us. If we were to estimate the area of this figure, the area under the curve that I have shaded in red, we've already talked about the fact that we can use the left-hand endpoint or the right-hand endpoint. So if I'm just using one rectangle, which would obviously be a really poor way to go, I can use the inscribed rectangle, and that's going to give me an area of 2 times 2, which is 4. Or I can use the circumscribed rectangle, which is again using the right-hand endpoint in this case, and that's going to give me an area of 2 times 6, which is 12. Now I know the area is somewhere between there, but that's not what the mean value theorem for integral says. The mean value theorem for integrals says that the actual area under the curve is going to be equal to some rectangle. In this case, that's this rectangle. Um, it's going to, those two areas are going to be equal. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for what is this value of C such that when I plug it in and I get f of c, which is this value, that that area is going to be the same as the area under the curve. Looking at the definition, let's just kind of break it down as we go through it. So f is a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. Then there exists a number C on the closed interval. So again, that's what I'm talking about right here. There's some C value that's between, in this case, 0 and 2, such that the area under the curve, remember that's what that integral means, the area under the curve, which is the red shaded area, is going to be equal to the area of some rectangle, and the base um, of the rectangle is b minus a, so this is the base of the rectangle, b minus a, multiplied by f of c, that's this value, f of c. So, and that obviously is going to give us the height of the triangle, I'm sorry, rectangle. So the area is equal to base times height, which we know, and that's just how we're finding it. So let's take a look at this example. In our example, we're integrating from 0 to 2 of x squared plus 2, which is the function that I have graphed for you. And again, how you show it is up to you. I'm going to go ahead and find that value because otherwise there's a lot, kind of a lot going on in terms of work. So let's go ahead and find this would be x cubed over 3 plus 2x from 0 to 2. So if I plug in 2, that gives me 8 thirds plus 2 times 2, or 4, and then minus 0 plus 0, so minus 0. So 8 thirds plus 4, I'm going to go ahead and add those together. If I think about 4 as being equivalent to 12 thirds, I can take 8 thirds plus 12 thirds to give me 20 thirds. So 20 thirds represents the area. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 20 thirds, which is the area, is equal to f of c, now what is f of c? I'm just going to plug in c for x, so that's c squared plus 2 times b minus a, so that's 2 minus 0. So this is the kind of work I would show. So I have 20 thirds equals c squared plus 2 times 2 minus 0 is 2. Let's divide each side by 2. So 26 is equal to c squared plus 2. And if I subtract 2, um, which is 2, right, would be the same as 12 6. So 26 minus 12 6 would be 8 6 is equal to c squared. So c squared is 4 thirds. And taking the square root of that gives me 2 over radical 3, which I would write, I'm sorry, not c squared, which I would take times radical 3 because we don't leave a rational a radical in the denominator, 2 radical 3 over 3. Now, you might say, okay, hold on, there should be a plus and minus there. True, but remember, I only care about the one that actually occurs here. 
So C is 2 radical 3 over 3. Now that's the C value. The F of C value, um, we don't actually have to find. We're just finding the C value. But I could plug it back in so that we make sure that it makes sense. Um, 2 radical 3 over 3 squared plus 2 would give me 4 times 3, that's 12 over 9, plus 2. So this would be 4 thirds plus 2. 4 thirds plus 2 is um, 10 thirds. And I would take 10 thirds times B minus A. So that's 2. 10 thirds times 2 is 20 thirds, and that is what we got here. So it does actually work out the way it's supposed to. You do not have to do this part of it, but feel free to do that as a check. All I need is the actual C value. Let's go ahead and try this one on your own. So all I'm looking for, again, is the value of C um, that is guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals. So again, I'm using my integral from 1 to 3. And this is 9 over x cubed, so I'm going to write that as 9x to the negative 3 dx. And I'm integrating that, so I'm going to get 9x to the negative 2 over 2. So 9x to the negative 2 over 2 would be 2x squared. Uh, sorry, negative 2x squared. And then from 1 to 3, so I'm going to start with 3. So 9 over negative 2 times 9, which would give me negative 1 half. And then plugging in 1, I would get 9 over negative 2 times 1, so negative 9 halves. Um, and I would be subtracting a negative 9 halves, so that would be actually be adding 9 halves. So negative 1 half plus 9 halves is 8 halves, which of course is 4. So finding f of c should be pretty easy because obviously we're going to have f of c is 2 because 2 times 2 would be an area of 4. So we know that f of c is going to be 2. So what we're trying to find, just again to make sure we know what we're doing, is we're trying to find the value of c, which based on this looks to be between 1 and 2. So let's take a look. I'm going to set 4, which is the integral, the area under the curve, equal to f of c. Remember, this was the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to f of c b minus a. So f of c would be taking this and plugging in c, so that's 9 over c cubed. And I'm multiplying that times b minus a, or 3 minus 1. So that's going to give me 4 equals 9 over c cubed times 2. And I would divide by 2 to get 9 over c cubed. I would then multiply by c cubed on each side and divide by 2. So c cubed is equal to 9 halves. So c is equal to the cubed root of 9 halves. And to be honest with you, I would leave it just like that. So c is the cubed root of 9 halves, and you can certainly check with your calculator to ensure that's somewhere between 1 and 2. The other concept that's closely related to the mean value theorem for integrals is the average value of a function. Now the average value of a function is actually just the value of f of c. So we know how to find c and we know that we could plug that in to find f of c, but actually in the equations or the work that we were doing before using the mean value theorem, we actually found the value of f of c. So before I talk to you about how to find the average value directly, let's just look at what we did before. So in our previous examples, we said, let's find the integral from a to b, and in this case, that's 0 to 2, of x squared plus 2 dx, and if you'll recall, we did all of the work and found that to be 20 thirds. So yes, I skipped some steps, but we'll show them again in just a moment when we use the actual formula. 
when we did that, we said 20 thirds, that's the um, integral or the area. So we said 20 thirds is equal to f of c times b minus a, so 2 minus 0. And then I divided each side by 2 because 2 minus 0 was 2, so that's 26, and that is the value of f of c. So really, 26 is the value that I'm looking for. That's f of c, 26, or 10 thirds. So 10 thirds is this value. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll just rewrite it as 10 thirds. Now, we can find it, obviously, using the mean value theorem or doing just a little bit of manipulation with that function. We can say, okay, if I want to find f of c directly, I can take 1 over b minus a and then the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared plus 2 dx. So 1 half... And then, again, this integral was 20 thirds. And again, I'm not going to show the work just because we already did that a couple of slides ago. And that ends up with 1 half times 20 thirds, which is 26 or 10 thirds. So again, it's very closely related because in order to find it, all I did was take this initial equation and take each side divided by b minus a. So f of c is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral. So it's really just a, an algebraic manipulation. Um, so we found it here in the mean value theorem, or we can find it directly using the average value of, fun of a function. So here's a question for you to try to find the average value of a function. Remember, it's 1 over b minus a the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So feel free to pause, try this question, then press play to see how you did. Again, in this case, I would take 1 over 4 minus 1, and then the integral from 1 to 4 of 3x squared minus 2x dx. So that's going to give me 1 third, and then this would be x cubed over 3, but then times 3, so really it's just x cubed. And then 2x would be 2x squared over 2, so really just x squared. And I'm integrating from 1 to 4. So I have 1 third, and then 4 to the third is 64, minus 4 squared is 16. And then minus 1 cubed is 1, minus 1 squared is 1. So I have 1 third of 64 minus 16 is 48. And obviously, 1 minus 1 is 0. So it's just a third of 48 or 16. So again, what does that tell me? That tells me that this value is 16. f of c is 16. It did not tell me what the value of c is. So to find the value of c, I would actually have to kind of work backwards or use the mean value theorem for integrals. Coming up next, we're going to look at the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which is not nearly as cool as the first, but it's still useful.